We're cutting class today. We're being bad. Because we feel like it. F school. Let's fly drones instead. What's up, everybody? I'm Matt Banana with Fly Tribe Magazine. And I'm Apache FPV. And today, we're going back to school. At Abraham Lincoln High School. Let's go. Willie, you're out there making it happen for the people, not just here in the school, but out there as well. What inspired you to start all this, you know, this drone program for the kids? Oh man, such a stacked question. There were so many influences in my life early on. The obvious answer is my, my Air Force experience uh, and my drive to want to fly. When you graduate high school and you go into the, the Air Force, your idea is they're just gonna let you get in a plane and you're gonna be able to fly and be a fighter pilot and Tuskegee Airmen and yeah, no. And I never got that fly dream, right? So the first time that I put a regular media drone up in the air, I'm like, I'm here, I'm here, I'm doing it. But it just wasn't enough, right? And then I put the goggles on and that was it. I was hooked, man. And I wanted to give every other kid who had pilot dreams, I wanted to give them an opportunity to get in the air too. So I just wanted to share that passion for flying with as many kids and as many people as I possibly could. Willie, talk to me about the Student Race League. We are literally in the throes of creating it. Uh, we had the only drone program in the greater New York City. Here I am trying to teach kids FPV piloting and they got good so quickly. So you know what? We've gotta make this a league, gotta make this a thing. But I wanted ours to be unique, right? We are in New York City. Everything about New York screams uniqueness uh, when you go across the nation. So um, not only did we create a drone race league, we created a league where our tracks defend themselves. But yeah, it, it, it came out of kids learning how to drone and then that just not being enough. They needed that competitive energy to be matched. So here we are with the uh, budding high school drone race league. I, I really like what you're doing here. You're, you're taking competitive nature, you're taking science and education and the love for FPV and bringing it all together. I, I am very excited to show you guys what they got cooking up here. What are you doing in this class to make drone racing different? Coach Dean is where the fun comes in. Coach Dean is my partner in the drone program and uh, we both looked at drone racing on YouTube and I thought it was boring. I love the speed. What else you got? So of course my military experience lent itself to what war games feel like, right? Evasive maneuvers and having to, you know, fly at the seat of your pants type of energy. Meanwhile, Coach Dean was like, okay, so we can't use real munitions, Mr. Cofield, but we'll figure out substitutes. Coach Dean is like, Nerf guns, man, pet tunnels, booby traps, and he gave me the idea to shoot smoke into our tracks at certain areas to lower the visibility. Coach Dean is completely responsible for the fun of my program. I'm the education and drone safety, and he's the good time. You come to learn from me, you come back because Coach Dean brought the fun. So you have a pilot, you typically have a spotter, and so you, you have a third person integrated into one drone, yes. is that correct? Yes. Okay, so, so give me a rundown of so that. So I'll give you that rundown. So uh, the racer is what you expect it to be, the individual who's actually manipulating the drone. And then I guess your spouter is our scout. So our scout is responsible for the blind side. Because of course, when you're, you're in FPV, I always uh, compare it to a football player. Football player has his helmet on, he does not see hard left, hard right, or behind him very well. So your scout is now able to take care of those things. And because you're now having to fly against a track that's defending itself, your scout is extremely important because your scout's gonna be the one that tells you that Mr. Cofield's got a bead on you on the turret and he's shooting at you, right? And he's starting to line it up to you. Or the S1 tank is coming your way, watch out for that. Or a booby trap is just about to explode. So the scout is gonna become very, very, very necessary. They're also drilled on how quickly they can change out a frame. So when you're dealing with the high drones, particularly the feet tend to break in a crash. 
So our techs will have literally a frame with the screws already lined up, ready for you to go, run over there, and in a timely fashion, they gotta change that frame out and keep you in the race. So you're getting a pit crew, you're actually getting that energy. This is this is a, a battlefield. It's a battlefield. You, you have brought it to <laughs> yes. the battlefield, I yes. love it. Do you feel that that this is that new era of, you know what, what I'm trying to question. say? Like, like absolutely. Um, is is this the next big thing in the sports arena? The plan is to create a non-athletic, highly competitive intellectual sport that has all of the fun and excitement of every other physical sport, but doesn't need your kid to stay in anyone's gym or anyone's treadmill. We want to see, you know, FPV droning become so big that it is recognized, yeah, so mainstream that it is recognized like baseball, like football, like soccer. And we also want to influence other cities and other states to create character in your races too. If New York wants to coin the phrase of defending our tracks, what's Oklahoma want to do now? Huh? What's California want to do now? I want to be able to go to your city, your state, go to an FPV event and see the difference, see the nuance. Right, I wanna go in there and see how them Kentucky boys conduct an FPV race. So I implore you guys, if you're watching you know, Fly Tribe Magazine, you're watching this episode, which I know you are, change up your tracks. Show us what you got and we'll show you what we got.